A £26 million centre dedicated to transforming physical scientific research into everyday technology has opened in Cambridge. The University of Cambridge's Maxwell Centre will bring hundreds of academics together with collaborators from industry. It hopes to emulate the forward thinking of its first professor of experimental physics, James Clark Maxwell. Adam Page reports. The Maxwell Centre aims to turn science that was initially driven by curiosity into technology will rely on every day. As part of the centre's launch, its scientists were demonstrating the potential of just some of the work that's going on under their roof. I study these materials called superconductors, which have the ability of conduct electricity without energy loss, so obviously they have a lot of potential applications, but they are still limited by the fact that they only work at very low temperatures, so we're trying to study how they work and how do we make them work at room temperatures which will be really useful. So I'm going to be demonstrating superconductors and how they react to the magnetic field. This is an interesting effect called the Meissner effect and what happens is if we take one of these pucks which have a superconducting layer of YBCO which is something we study here and we put it near the magnet, see what happens? I'll give it a little nudge. So what we're seeing is the superconductor expelling the magnetic field and creating a repelling force, and this is why it levitates. The obvious application for this is in levitating trains, anything that we want to levitate, but uh, it's already being used in prototype uh, maglev trains. Uh, it also can be used as a research tool to manipulate components and as electronic and circuits, that sort of thing. And superconductors in general have a lot of applications in energy transfer and everything that has to do with efficiency, energy efficiency. The centre provides space for 230 scientists to conduct their research and have meetings with members of industry to see how their work can find real-world uses and offer solutions to scientific challenges like the energy crisis. But well, one of the sort of key anchors in this building is the Winton program uh, for the physics of sustainability. And the idea there is that we're going to have to engineer ourselves out of you know, at least some of the current mess we're in to both have a sustainable future but a prosperous future at the same time. And what's so exciting is that if you look at what we do, largely to do with energy at the moment, we do it really badly. And if we can grab hold of the science that lets us do it better, and we don't want to uh, break the second law of thermodynamics, no one's learned how to do that, but to get to the second law of thermodynamics would be a remarkable achievement in many areas of where we use energy. And in the Winton program, that's what we're testing, uh, new science that has a chance to completely transform energy. Hugh Glass is part of a team that's trying to find a way to improve energy storage by seeing if there's an alternative to lithium ion, which is found in most batteries, but their capacity and availability is limited. So we're looking into magnesium uh, as, a, as an alternative to lithium, the benefit being that it has a two plus charge, so you can store twice as much energy in the same weight or volume as a lithium battery. Uh, we're at quite an early uh, stage with my research. There are lots of other beyond lithium technologies that people look at in the Department of Chemistry which are much closer to research. Uh, we look anywhere between a few years and 15 years down the line to what the next technologies might be. On Saturday there will be a drop-in session from 11am onwards where members of the public will be able to get a glimpse of the future. Adam Page, Cambridge TV News. Meanwhile, a